Today, I'm going to explain what neuroplasticity is and why having an understanding of how the brain works is such a core component of instilling a growth mindset culture in your home. If you want to raise kids that have a yes I can mentality, then this is the video series for you. In fact, this is my fourth video about the growth mindset concept. If you want to watch the previous videos, you can find the links in the description down below or visit my website seedtostem.com, a parenting blog for parents that want to raise STEM and growth mindset kids. My name is Iftakhar Khan. Let's get started. In my previous video, I briefly explained that the brain is like a muscle in that it can be grown and developed through hard work and well-executed strategies. Neuroplasticity is a science behind how the brain continuously adapts, grows, and rewires itself. And yes, I have some bad news for those of you who want to take shortcuts. Unlike plastic surgery, the ability of surgeons to actually rewire our brain and make us smarter is beyond the technology that exists today. And so if you want to improve your brain, you're going to have to do that the old fashioned way through hard work and process. No! <laughs> so what are the basic principles of neuroplasticity? Well, first let's start off with a basic layman's understanding of how the brain works. The human brain is the largest brain compared to the body of any organism in the world. Our brains are made up of over a hundred billion nerve cells called neurons. And scientists claim that these neurons are more powerful than the, the most powerful supercomputer in the world. These neurons are connected by trillions of pathways called synapses. And when you are born in the first couple of years, your brain begins a lifelong process of synaptic pruning. Synaptic pruning is the brain's process of strengthening the pathways inside our brain that we regularly use and eliminating unnecessary connections that we don't regularly use. This idea of your brain eliminating unnecessary connections is a core principle of neuroplasticity. If you don't leverage your brain consistently, your brain's capability will diminish over time. It's as simple as use it or lose it. Why is this happening to me? A 2018 British scientific study tracked 3,400 civil servants after they had retired and found that their short-term memory decreased by over 40% after they had retired. Wow. Why is it harder or why does it take us longer to complete activities that we rarely do? Well, it's because the synapses between the neurons in our brain are rarely fired for those activities. Synapses that are regularly used get stronger over time. Think about how driving to work becomes like second nature. This is a second principle of neuroscience, which is neurons that fire together, wire together. We can change the way our brains are wired up by changing our daily habits. For example, smiling and sleeping more, eating healthy food. Lose weight, get healthy, get in shape. Everybody looking all anorexic talking about that's healthy. I know what healthy is being more focused on intention and minimizing distraction are all ways to rewire our brain. Ooh, Focus! Okay. Always concentrate. While researching this topic, I discovered an incredible TED Talks by Barbara Arrowsmith Young. She had a learning disability where even simple things like reading and telling the time were an ordeal. She was told that she was going to have to live with this learning disability and this limited life. And as you can imagine, this was incredibly depressing to her. So much so that she tried committing suicide in the eighth grade and she even failed at that. And so she decided to try to understand what was wrong with her. And she realized that a part of her brain was damaged. But the good news was she also learned about neuroplasticity and the ability for the brain to develop and grow. And so she started some brain exercises. And the amazing thing was within three to four months, she started to notice her brain was improving. She was starting to able to understand the things that she was reading. Now, Barbara is the CEO of a company that sells brain exercises and her TED Talks has been watched by over 1 million people. I highly recommend you watch it if you have the time and are looking for some inspiration. So now that you know that the brain can be rewired, I'm sure you're interested in what mental exercises can you do with your kids to help improve the neural connections between their brains. Well, I'm going to dive deep into individual games and activities in future YouTube videos, but if you want to get started, 
Here are five quick tips. Word searches and crossword puzzles are a great way to have your child focus and think. Board games are fun ways to train the brain to ask the right questions and deduce the right answer through the process of narrowing and refining. Is yours Liz? Yes. Mm -hmm. Got you. Scavenger hunts can be the best of both worlds. They're fun, they require you to be active, and they require you to think. Learning a new language is incredible in stimulating the brain. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. That's it, how you count in German from one to ten. Write and draw with both hands. Now what brain mapping has found is that the right side of the brain is mostly associated with creativity. And one way to stimulate this side of the brain is by writing with the wrong hand. So, have you heard about neuroplasticity? If you haven't, what additional questions do you have? And if you're an expert in this space, what tips and tricks can you share with us for strengthening the neural connections between our brains? If this video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. This lets me to know to make more videos like this. And if you're interested in joining a community of parents just like you, join our c to stem Facebook group, where parents like you will help each other raise STEM and growth mindset kids. I'll see you next Thursday where we review different books that teach kids about the brain.